Welcome to this ASP.NET video on web parts. Web parts are a brand new family of controls that support personalized content and layout. Your end users can edit the content on your site and change the layout directly in the page. Plus it's really easy to write your own web parts too. I'm going to go ahead and get started by creating a new website. And we'll call this, uh, let's see, web parts. These things are a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing the demonstration for this. Um, we're going to start by dropping in an existing theme that has a style sheet set up for us to have three sets of columns, which I call Web Zone 1, 2, and 3. Uh, there's a video on ASP.NET themes and master pages, but for now we'll just leave this alone. We're going to build on top of that with a default ASP.NET page. And I need to make a few changes right here in the middle. I already have some code on the clipboard that I'll paste in. And you can see the way this looks with a couple of div tags. We have three columns. Oh, I forgot something here. In order to use the, the theme and the style sheet, I need to turn on themes. And to get our design mode to work, turn on the style sheet themes. Now let's take a look. OK, so we'll have three columns to play with, the blue, gray, and white. The blue and gray will contain our, the, the main content for our site. And the white area we'll use for configuration. Now before you start dealing with web parts, which is this big collection here of server-side controls, you need a web part manager. So we'll drag this on the page and just pretty much leave it alone for now. We'll interact with this a little bit later. In, um, now web parts, the way to visualize them, that they are a collection of controls, either user controls that you make or server controls that come with ASP.NET, and they live inside zones. So in order to get started, we need to drag a couple of zones onto our page. We'll just use these two. Now inside these zones, you drop in either regular ASP.NET controls like a calendar, or let's see, I'll drop in a... Um, I just need something else. I'll, I'll drop in a login control. So we have something to look at. And that's enough to get started. Let's, let me show you what this looks like in a browser. So there's not a lot we can do with this yet. We can, you know, we can hide these components and make them a bit larger, but that's uh, that's about it for now. So we're going to add some more functionality to our site. So if we go back, and I'm going to bring in a drop-down list box. It's inside this list box that we're going to um, switch use our use our uh, web part manager to switch the different modes. So I'll start with a couple of modes. The first is the one you just saw, and that's the that's the browse mode. The next mode we'll use is design mode. So in order to handle that change in the combo box, I've turned on Enable Post Back. That means whenever we change that, I'll double click to get the event, we're going to drop into this code right here. Now it's inside this code, we're going to put a switch statement that changes depending on what the user has selected. So I'll use a the VB.NET select statement. By hitting tab, you can see this expands to something, um, kind of a template or placeholder for our code. So I'm going to switch on the drop down list one selected uh, the selected value and the first case is the browse mode and the second case is design mode. Now We're going to add a couple more here later. For now, um, let's see, we need the web part we'll set the display mode equal to the browse display mode and if we switch to design mode in the drop-down combo, we switch to design mode. Okay, let me show you what this looks like. So if I choose design, now the web parts pop back up, but you can see I can drag and drop the different components between the two zones. So right now they're both in web part two. I can move this back to web part zone one. So that's pretty nice. Let's see what else we can do. So now I'd like to add my own web part or my own custom user control and that's really simple I will go and add a new web user control and this will just add a couple of numbers together so I'll call it addition and we just need a couple of text boxes and a button and a label to display the results in and I'll set the default value that equal to zero okay now when you click the button 
we'll create two variables. This one dot text and y and we'll set the label one text equal to x plus y. Something really simple. Obviously we're not doing any kind of uh, validation here but this is fine for now just to get the point across. So if we save this and close it by going back to the design mode on our main page we need to add support for users to be able to add or remove this user control from our page. So I'll make a little bit more room here. We're going to use another control called the catalog zone. Now the catalog zone will have a list of all the different web parts that you can apply to this page. So for the catalog zone, by dragging in this declarative catalog part right underneath it, I can then add my new control. And this is a couple of steps and take, took me a little while to kind of get used to it, but you have a catalog and inside that you have this declarative catalog. Now I have to click edit template. And what you're doing here by dragging this new addition user control into here, you're instantiating an instance and I'm able to drop in and give it a name. So if I go to the design mode, you can see our little web user controls right here, it's just one line of code. I'm going to give it a title called addition. Now it looks like title's not supported, but it is that is a tag that's supported by the declarative catalog part and that's important. Find our little drop down list right here and add something called edit mode or catalog, I'm sorry. We'll get to edit in a minute. And let's handle the catalog case. This means that you want the end user wants to see a list of the the options available from the catalog. Okay, now we switch back and hit refresh. We have a catalog mode. There's our addition control. I'm going to click on and add it to web part zone 2. And there it is. So these two show up. So I can go back to design mode and move this over here. So all that works. So go into catalog. You imagine you could have a, a whole bunch of different web parts in here that you write yourself. This is where you could let the end users manage it. There are a couple of other pieces supported by uh, supported by the catalog. There's the import catalog part and page catalog part. Those are different ways for you to manage. Um, either you have a repository for catalog items or you can even upload your own catalog or web parts if your site supports it. You know, I'm going to make this calendar view a little bit smaller. I'll change the uh, formatting just to something simple. Now we should see all three columns show up here. This should look a little bit nicer. Ah, I'm still not getting it. Now yeah, that's fine. I know. I can edit the style sheet and change the default font to something a little bit smaller. And I think this will let us see all the columns on one page. Ah, still not getting it. That calendar is just big. Well, that's fine. Okay, so we've shown the design mode, the browse mode, which is the default, and the catalog mode, which allows you to add new web parts to your page. Let's go a little bit further, and we'll make our little custom control right here. We'll make it so you can change it programmatically from this, uh, change it interactively from the from the area on the right side here. So let's close all this down and back in design mode, I'm going to drop in a new thing called the editor zone. So inside the editor zone, there's other things that you can pull in there, including the, let's see, the layout, uh, let's say the behavior editor. This allows you to change the description and some other information on there. There's a lot there. I don't want to show how all that works yet. We can also drag in the layout. And two more, the appearance editor, I'll leave that one turned on, and finally the property grid. So there's a collection of four different editors that you can use to change the configuration of one of your web parts. So there's a lot here to kind of get your head around, but here's what I'll do. I'm going to go back to our little addition control. I'm going to make it so it's programmable or changeable from the web page. And to do that, I'm going to drag in something that's we're going to change a property and it'll be this label right here and we switch to source mode what we need to do is give our control a property I will use the the new code expansion features in VB.net so I'll type property and hit tab 
I get the whole syntax here for adding a new property. And this will be some kind of text. It'll be a string, and we'll call this, I'll call it the title, actually. Okay. So whenever the title is changed through this property, we want to change the label to text to whatever's passed in here. Now, in order for this property to be exposed and usable from our web page, I need to apply two properties. Web browsable. And the second one is personal personalizable. Okay, so when we have those two properties now, if we go back to our application, remember we already we've already added our addition um, web our addition web part to our page. I can save this and view it in a browser. And I keep forgetting to add the menu options here. So what we'll do, we'll take this catalog and copy it, paste it in. Now we're going to add an edit menu item. And we'll change the web part manager to switch our page over to edit mode. Okay, we have lots of modes here. So let's switch to edit mode. Now the page doesn't really change. What it does do, it adds an option here in the little drop down called edit. And that, that makes the editor zone appear. And I can change a couple things like the title, my addition control, and apply that. And that changes there. And our little property here is enter two numbers. And let's just make sure it works. Uh, 5 plus 6 is not 10. All right, I have an off. I have some kind of math problem here, which is kind of amusing. Oh, I know what I did. I'm adding this number twice. Ah, look at that. All right, well, that's fine. Um, so now we can close out of this zone and restore this thing back to the browse mode. Now, the last thing I want to show you, if we go back to the design mode, if you want to reset everything so it's back to the way you have it designed originally, what we'll do is drag this link button on here and we'll have it reset the whole page back to normal. So I'll call it a reset. And the code for this guy is pretty simple. We're going to use this uh, personalization, personalization administration uh, component and have it reset the state for, for this particular user. And then finally, to get the page to refresh, we'll just simply redirect back to ourself. So we'll bring this in a browser. And so notice how the addition controls over here and the calendar and login. If I hit reset, it restores it to my original layout with a login and calendar. So as you can see, there's a lot here. You've got these four major modes where you can design and move the page around. You've got the catalog mode, which right now is relatively simple, but it does allow a allows you to uh, have a place where you can store all your different web parts and then you have a very rich way in order for you to edit the different properties on your uh, components. The final piece, I mean, there's a lot more here. You, you, you can use something called a connection zone to wire up controls so they can talk to each other and you have lots of different other uh, ways that you can really express your website using web parts. Well I hope you've enjoyed this demo of web parts and you find a way to use them in your next site.